Coach, thank you. We are over 4,000 miles away from where you're seated in Orlando as we come to you from the European home of the NFL, London, England, and Wembley Stadium. Coming up, another edition of the NFL International Series, and it should be a good one, between the Indianapolis Colts and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now a first down throw, Locke. He'll find Paris Campbell, that's complete. And he's gonna be dropped following a pickup of seven, past the 30 to the 32. A good safe pass there right off the bat. That's almost a rhythm play. That's what we like to call it. Get them into rhythm early, something safe, something they're confident about, something they feel good. And once that's completed, then you just keep moving from there because the confidence elevates. Looking to throw again on second down. Luck. That's complete to the running back, Naheem Hines. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That's good for an Indianapolis first down on a gain of 10. Well, that was a pretty favorable situation there. What would you call that, second and manageable? Smart play, too. Didn't force it downfield when he didn't have it. Just checked it down, let him get the first down, and that's exactly what he did. On first and 10, Locke. That's complete to Jack Doyle, the tight end. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. A good pick up there, a 22. I do believe we'll see a little bit more of this as this game progresses because when you can have that type of a gain in the middle of the defense, it hurts them in so many ways because most teams like to be strong down the middle. And if you can sting them there, that opens things up for you on the outside as well. That's where he, their big tight end, is so good. That middle third, the seam routes, the in routes. Yeah, you're right. Probably see more of that. Yeah, it takes a lot of courage and fortitude to go in the middle as well. <laughs> and he's got it. How about the start throwing the football? Four for four on this opening drive. Oh, he's slinging it. And oftentimes when you talk about slinging it, you're thinking about a guy throwing it all over the yard, not necessarily accurately. In this case, though, He's honing in on his targets, and he's delivering. Yeah, the opening script, however, they drew it up for this first drive, going to plan so far. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. So five plays on this drive, Charles. All passes, all completions, and just like that, they're in the red zone. And don't you think the playbook opens up a little bit more now? Because all they've done is throw the football. If you want to run it now, you may very well have them fooled. They'll run here with Mack. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gained, they can run that plan any down. On first down, Locke. Funches has it complete. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. A good pickup there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Facing a second and two after that last catch. Good for eight yards. Here's Locke. That ball caught by Funches. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Four yards on the touchdown grab. And the Colts take it right down and score on the opening drive. Well, that's how they envisioned it. Get the football to start the game and score it. And I don't know if that was scripted. Was it an audible? Or was it just a play call that they had in their pocket? No matter what, they had the right call on against the right defense, and they end up in the end zone. Vinatieri connecting on the extra point, And that makes the score 7-0.
The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple Good extra shot. yards Good up shot. to the 27-yard line. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. Foles and the Jags come up now first and 10 at their own 27. Mike 50. Mike 50. What is now a run. This is Alfred Blue. And they'll bring him down after just a short pickup. Jamal Sheard on the stop. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs. Run some plays. Run some clock. Allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath. Settle down and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. From the 29, Foles dumps it off to Fournette. Give him eight on the play, and they'll be faced with a third and inches. Now, Charles, what's the mindset here offensively? You gave up a touchdown pretty quickly. Would it have changed if you had gotten a stop and it would be 0-0 right now or no? I wouldn't think so. I think in most cases, just down a touchdown, you know, I mean, we're just getting started here. It should be a long way to go. You think to yourself, stick with the game plan, all the things you worked out in practice. But you have some teams that when they get down, their natural tendency is to aggressively strike back. And let's see if they want to get outside of the game plan we expect and try and be aggressive on their first series. And third down is a key down in any game you play. And third down defense, something we've got to watch in this one. Got to be effective on the passing downs. That's a pretty good first step right there. On fourth down, on is Logan Cook to punt. Chester Rogers deep for Indianapolis. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. They'll be looking to duplicate that first drive, the one that got them that 7 nothing lead. Of course they would. I mean, look, they're on the road. So getting the 7 to nothing lead was huge for them, right? Imagine getting up two touchdowns on the road, taking the crowd out of the game. It'd be ideal. Naeem Hines, his first carry. And he'll be upended after a gain of five, up to the 25-yard line. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. Here's a second and five now from the 25. On second down, here's a run with Mack. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Let's go, let's Indianapolis go, go. moving the chains there on a gain of 12. Good push up front in that run in between the tackles. Let's play the leverage game here. Offensive line just got lower than the defensive front, and they're able to get their pads on them and move them backwards and create space for their running back to roam. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Out of the gun, Luck. Rodgers brings it in. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. Get up, boy. Get up, boy. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Long. He's got Jack Doyle. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. Luck going to bring him up first and 10. And he's hit on his first nine passes now in the ball game. This is Hines. And now the ball's out. Fumble near midfield. And they are going to get this one back, it looks like. So nearly like for like fumbles, but they hang on to this thing and keep it a turnover. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Mike, number 53, Mike, 53. Come on, the ball, come on. Let's go. 
On the ground, this is Leonard Fournette, and he'll get it down here to the 43. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. All right, Brad, I know we're in the early going here, but those kind of runs, they're going to open up a world of opportunities for this offense going forward. First and 10 at the 43 yard line. Hey, here we go, I got you, I got you. They keep it with Fournette on first down. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. That sends him two yards in the wrong direction and leads to second down. Came out in a power set, but that only served to put more men in the box. And guess what? If you're going to do that, you've got to win up front, right? Your offensive guys have got to beat the defenders. They lost all leverage on that play. On second and 12, Foles, and incomplete. Marquise Lee, the intended target, and it's third down. That pass just a little bit off. It looked like maybe he tried to force it in there. Game speed, always different, no matter what you do in practice. You can't simulate it, right? So your decision-making, everything has to be a little bit quicker. Sometimes it can throw you off until you adjust. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. And he's going to be stopped here at the 43, and that is not near enough to pick up the first. Two yards on the pick up there. It's fourth down. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. And this will carry out of bounds. Where are they going to spot it now? But about the 18-yard line, it looks like. And the Colts getting ready to go. And last drive, obviously not what you're looking for. You've got the lead. you got to protect the football. So in other words, someone got lucky because they've been moving the ball really well and wearing them down. In this case, though, giving up the football doesn't make them very happy. They can't wait to get back out there and atone for it. Yeah, try to atone for it here on this drive. Here's a throw, complete right side to start things out. And he almost gets this to the 30, taken down about a yard shy. Indianapolis moving the chains there on a gain of 12. They really love to get him into one-on-one -on -one opportunities, and this is one way, work him out of the slot and create a mismatch. Who's going to cover him? Corner, safety, linebacker? He's got a way to beat all of those positions. Luck on first down. Taken in by the tight end, Doyle. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Luck gives this one off to Mack. Four yards the pick up, first down. Let's go. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down, keep the sticks moving. 40. Now a fake on the give here as they try the run pass option. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on. And I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs and you tend to stall them out when you do that. And he'll be brought down right on the 50. A gain of three. Brings up third down. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. They'll try and run for this with Mack. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. Indianapolis moving the chains there on a gain of 12. 
We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. They run with Hines. And he'll slice his way down to the 30 with a pickup of seven. That was play number seven on this drive, and it got him seven yards. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. A good run got seven on first. Here's second and three. Now Luck defers to Mack. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. Four yards the pickup, first down. Well, that was a unit that understood exactly where the first down marker was, handed it to their guy who could run it, created some space, and he got there. On first down. Hines, and only a yard this time as he's taken down right around the 26. Brandon, one thing about blitzes, they really confuse offensive linemen at times, and what you have to do is lock in on the guy right in front of you. If you don't, you saw the end result. Defensive tackle end up making the play. 45 go. Right, 40. Coming for son. I'm coming for son. On second and nine. Luck. This goes out right to Doyle. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. The last catch did get three, but they're still left needing seven yards on third down. From the gun, here's Locke. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes this one down to the 15. Good for a Colt first down. The former Lion Ebron there bringing it in from Andrew Luck. Luck going to bring him up first and 10. And he's hit on all six of his throws on this drive. Now it's Luck. And that going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. Right, you know a coach said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player. Not a no chance at all. Way easier said than done. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. So back-to-back -back incompletions. Third down here in 10, but you're still in field goal range. And that's the thing to keep in mind. They're in field goal range. So now you don't take any unnecessary risks, but you try and find a way to get back to what you were doing earlier in the drive in order to finish this one off. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions. Have them looking at third and 10. They'll try and set up the screen to Hines. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. He'll give up six yards there on the loss, and it'll bring up fourth down. Well, you can see what they wanted to do. They wanted to set up the screen there, but it got blown up. It's hard to run that play if you're not getting a lot of pressure at the quarterback because the space doesn't open up. They were able to read that one and slow it down and stop it before they could get a first down. And Vinatieri's kick is good. And the lead moves to 10 zip. Well, that will go down as a 15-play drive, and it results in three points. So, some disappointment? It's funny. We had our conference before the game with the offensive coordinator. And what did he tell us? I just want every drive to end in a kick, right? An extra point, a punt, or a field goal. Well, in this case, I think it is a little bit of a disappointment because it did end in a kick, but that type of a drive should end in the end zone. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. 
Out comes the Jaguar offense now as they get set to take over. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. Foles and the Jags come up now first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll start out on the ground. It's Leonard Fournette. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. I think they want to start getting back into this game. It behooves them to get better on first down. Yeah, certainly not what they were looking for there out of the opening play of this drive. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. Here's Foles. Completes it to Lee. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. A 14-yard first down pickup for the Jaguars. Partney sold the go route really well. Thought he was going deep, then curled it back inside for a nice completion. DBs love when they pump the brakes, don't they? Yeah, that's really, that's really a whole lot cool. of fun. It's almost like you said, listen, if you're going to sell the go, just go. Well, let's see who's faster. On first down, it's blue. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. They'll run on second down with Blue. He'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. Foles. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. Problems on third down so far in this first half. Relatively small sample size, but they're now 0 for 3. And the average in the league, somewhere around 40% on third down for offenses. So what's the answer to this? Either convert them or don't get to third down in the first place. Get your big chunks of yards on first and second down. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And last time they were able to churn some clock. They got the field goal, added onto their lead. But that was a drive that was so long, it should have ended in a touchdown. You know that's how they felt. And we'll both be headed to the airport after the game. But we probably should go to the post-game press conference because <laughs> someone's going to ask the head coach about this drive. And he's going to profess that he was happy to get points. And we know that's not true. Okay, after this type of a drive, not getting a touchdown, a huge disappointment. Indianapolis moving the chains there on a gain of 12. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. A shotgun snap for Love. He's got it to Hilton. A gain of six there on first. He wasn't ready. He wasn't ready. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Check curls, check curls, check curls. To throw is Love. They'll find Hines out of the backfield. Four yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up what looks to be a third in inches. Can't be more than a half a foot. The offense on third down today, they've been okay. Two for three thus far. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. Now Luck. But he's got his man, Hilton. 23 yards on the play. As far as I'm concerned, Andrew Luck can do it all. I mean, he's an underrated runner, toughness in the pocket, strong and stout, but let's face it, the money, that comes from his arm. And smart, valedictorian of his high school class in Houston, then he goes to Stanford. He's got it all. On first down, it's Luck. So complete there, Rodgers. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. 
A 14-yard gain for Indianapolis and also move the sticks. Luck going to bring him up first and 10. And he's hit on all five of his pass attempts on this drive so far. They'll run on first down with Marlon Mack. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. And that's the kind of run that gets everyone excited on offense. And you know, oftentimes, the guys who carry the ball are the ones in the huddle doing the chirping. Right now, I think it's the offensive line telling them, run it again. We are right there about to break a big one. On second down now, it's Mack. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. A gain of 10 as they look to add on to this 10-point lead. When he runs, he seems to do a nice job of knowing when to be patient and find the hole. And then when the hole is there, he goes quickly. You're exactly right. He knows how to just take off. But you know what else? Brings a little thump with him, doesn't he? He does. He packs the boom at the end of the run and finishes it going forward. That's what you want to see out of your backs. And he's got his man. It's Hilton for the Colts touchdown. The three-yard touchdown pass. And the Colts, they add on to their advantage. That's why you've got your star out there. Throw the ball to him. They did. That's simply saying we don't care what coverage you put out there. He's so good. We're going there with the football anyway. And there's not a thing you can do about it. Inside the red zone, they go to him. He gets it done. Finitary able to tack on the PAT. And that makes our score 17-0. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And good starting field position. He'll get this one all the way up to about the 35-yard line. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. And we don't want to call this desperation time, especially in the second quarter, but you're you don't down. don't want to. Well, no, but oh, let me finish. Okay, my bad. And you're down three scores already. You've done nothing offensively, nothing on the scoreboard. That's that's not a good combination. I think you, just, you, called called a I think you just called it desperation time. I, I think did. you did. But yeah. let's face it, you mentioned this to me in a break earlier in the game. The energy level hasn't been there right from the start. We've noticed that. They've got to find a way to get on their toes and start punching instead of retreating to use a boxing analogy so now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards now falls man open is keelan cole complete that catch good for five it's third down catch on second down but it didn't help at all and now they're looking at third down here he'll look to throw and able to find conley and getting this just shy of midfield they'll spot it at the 49 the jags picking up the first down there a gain of 12. they're going to need to get up and set in a hurry Mike, 53. Back to throw now on first down. He's got the hookup with Conley. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. That one a pickup of 15 for Jacksonville. 
Thus far, it hasn't been a real fun half for them, but a play like that, that may get them off the schneid a little bit, get them loosened up and moving. Kind of seems like they've been sleepwalking and still sitting on zero points. And it's not always making an adjustment. Sometimes it's just going back to what you know can work and finally getting it done. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. They've been playing sound fundamental defense thus far and able to keep this offense from creating a major dent on the scoreboard. Able to force the incompletion, but still waiting for that game-changing play. You feel like it's coming, the first sack, the first turnover. In a sense, they're playing old-school defense right now. The new school defense is what you said, taking the ball away. There goes a deep ball in zone. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Keelan Cole, the intended target, and it'll bring up third down. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they didn't completions on first and second down. Now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. Now back to throw. And he completes it to Westbrook. It'll be a gain of eight, but it'll also lead to a fourth down. A short game that doesn't get them the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. So on fourth down, Jags kicker Josh Lambeau comes on from the right hash. This from 45 yards away. And this will split the uprights. It's right down the middle. And they're on the board at least here. It's now 17 to 3. So they do get the three points before they hit halftime. Something to build on, maybe. Yeah, go ahead and raise the banner, right? Wave the flag. That's good. Got points. And now, as you said, they got something to build on as they get ready for the second half. Now after the made field goal, back out Lambeau to kick this one off. This fielded at the two. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. The Colts offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. You've got under a minute to go here until halftime. you got the good size lead. No need to do anything crazy. No, there really is no need to do anything crazy. The smart play, go ahead and take your lead into the locker room and then try and add to it in the second half. But there's a part of me that looks at this and says, first half going my way, I have a little bit of a cushion. Let's go ahead and try and extend things. If you've got some good plays drawn up, you might want to think about them right here. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. And they had to go a long way on their last drive to score the touchdown. This time, they get at least a little bit more of a cushion with field position. I have to think that with this field position, after what they did on the last drive, they might want to take a shot right now and try and cut down the length of the drive. Draw play. This is Hines. And he's not going to go anywhere as they get him down behind the line of scrimmage. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. Second and 12. Luck. That's complete to Hines out of the backfield. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are, you know, make him make someone miss in the open field. They had the catch on second down, but it didn't help at all, and now they're looking at third down here. Out of the gun, Locke. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. 
And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 32-yard line. So we have come to halftime in what's already a two-touchdown game. As it's time now to send you back stateside to Orlando, Florida, and check in with Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach, as they say here in London, all to play for as we are back underway in the second half. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. Out come the Jaguars now as they'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But this is a real, I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. From the 29, Foles, and this will be incomplete. And that incompletion was caused by the defense. I think they were trying to get one into the middle of the field, trying to find a receiver there, but they were in zone defense. And what are the advantages of being in zone? Eyes and reaction. Eyes meaning all eyes are on the quarterback and able to react when he throws the football and rally to that spot. And that's exactly what happened there. Able to get there and knock it away. The catch made by James O'Shaughnessy, the tight end. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. First target, first catch, and a first down. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fellow runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. The throw over the middle, taken in. Uh, he's got this to the 30 before being taken down. A well-executed 22-yard gain. I don't know what they talked about at halftime. Whatever it was, it worked. They looked like a different team here in the third quarter. Yeah, I doubt that there are very many trash cans that got kicked over that type of a speech. I think what they did was they analyzed what worked in the first half, what didn't, and figured out a better game plan. Fournette, a first down carry. Danico Autry is in on the stop. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Again, it's Fournette. And he's going to get this pretty close to a first down at the Colts 22. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. It's a loss of a full three yards, and it brings up fourth down. A pass for negative yardage, obviously no good. Maybe he shouldn't have thrown it, or maybe he shouldn't have caught it. I think we were seeing it at the same time, weren't we? Maybe you let that one go, right? Because you can see the lost yardage about to develop, but that goes against every instinct of a receiver. They're taught to catch everything. So it's really hard to be mad at him and yell at him for trying to make that play. So chalk that down as an eight-play drive capped with a field goal. Yeah, as a friend of mine used to say, they were moving and grooving for a while, but they couldn't keep the momentum going enough to get a touchdown out of it.
Now after the made field goal, back out Lambeau to kick this one off. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll wind up getting an extra couple yards here for his trouble as he'll bring this one out to the 27. Here's the Colts now as they get ready for their first possession on offense of the second half. The third quarter has not been kind to them. After they built that lead at intermission, they've seen that lead shrink. And how much of that is simply execution? How much of that is maybe you lose your edge a little bit because you've got a lead? And you do have to credit the other team some because they've made some adjustments to start to slow them down. Can they find those counters now? Those extra plays or plays they haven't run that'll be effective and get them back moving again. They'll be looking for something here, anything to seize that momentum back. A good pick up there, a 22. And the game just keeps evolving. Big guys running those corner routes, so difficult to cover. They'll run on first down. Mack takes to midfield, but no further. Just a yard there. And this is why aggressive defensive coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D lineman to make the play. They'll go again here with Mack. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. It'll wind up being a loss of two. And that's going to lead to a third and 11. Throwing his lock. Over the middle complete. That's Hines. And they will advance this across midfield, but still well shy of a first as he's tackled at the 47. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez, as he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt. This one angles out of bounds in a good spot in the coffin corner. And they're going to mark this out of the five-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Let's Superb. Go. Trying to get the run game going. This is Fournette. And they're going to get him behind the line yet again as his nightmare afternoon continues. Marcus Hunt able to take him down. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter. No time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. This is the running back, Blue. And that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. But these guys are going to chop into that deficit. They got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage. No yardage would be found. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Back to throw here. Oh, a ball batted in the air, and now it's intercepted. Quincy Wilson with the INT. And he will score. Touchdown to Indianapolis. This D wanted to put it away before we even get to the fourth quarter, widening that margin a bit further. And while they won't just empty the bench just yet, if you're a backup, start loosening up. I think you'll get a chance to play before this one is over now with that type of a cushion. Benatari connecting on the extra point, and the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful.
So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. This fielded at the two. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. Foles and the Jags come up now first and 10 at their 25-yard line. After the pick six, they go right back to the air. The open man is Westbrook. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 11 yards there for Jacksonville and a first down as well. Foles now six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and 10. Foles on the handoff, going to give it to Blue. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. I think we can safely say that those types of plays are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. The last run got six, now second and four. Second and four. Looking middle, and that's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Ten yards there, good enough for the Jags' first down. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and ten at the 47. Watch the screen! Down to hit! They just do get the playoff as he'll look to throw. Looking long for Westbrook. Got a man, it's caught at the six-yard line. And oh, so close as he takes it all the way to the two-yard line. They're still looking for their first touchdown of the game, and for a second, I thought they had it right there. Now looking on the sideline, it's finally good to see nods of approval. as a welcome sign of life that this offense needed. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this foot. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Well, if you're going to throw the ball on first and goal from the two, the worst thing that should result is an incompletion for you offensively. But, Brandon, this is a different type of football. Back in my day, first and goal from the two, a lot of big people with big neck rolls, they were on the field trying to ram it into the end zone. It's second and goal back to the eight-yard line now. Here's Blue. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Partner, I know we're in a goal-to-go situation, but my goodness, think about running the ball here, not even a thought, is yeah, it? defensively, they're in a prime spot. And I think the defensive guys are probably expressing themselves to them as well. I wouldn't run it here, guys. You might want to try throwing it. His pass caught at the four. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. They do get eight out of the pitch and catch. However, it's fourth down. Well, this is how you shake the thoughts of that interception on the last drive. You come out and start this one four for four. And watching him throw it around with that type of confidence reminds me of a guy I played with way back when who told me, I don't care if I throw ten interceptions in a row, I'm going to stay confident keep flinging it. I just figured there's something wrong with the football. So his third field goal of the ball game brings him a bit closer, but there's no question. They need to start turning some of these threes into sixes. And sevens and probably even eights. You know, as a kicker, you just head out when you're called upon, so he's done his job. It's the rest of the offense that needs to get it in gear. They want to close this gap. Now after the made field goal, back out, Lambeau to kick this one off. Fielded about a yard deep. 
And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. And the Colts coming out now. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trite expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. A run there on first down and a pretty good one of five yards. So make it second and five. Give him five on the carry there and it'll be second down. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. they got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. On second down, it's Hines. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. That backs him up one yard and brings up third down. That was shades of Tennessee volunteer football back in the 80s with Charles Davis coming up from the secondary to make the tackle for a loss. You mean my teammates doing that, right? Because they would tell you, my coach would say, where's that tape? I want to see that. But how about the complete package there? Not just playing the pass, but being a willing tackler and making a really nice play. He's got Jack Doyle. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 16 yards to pick up there. The Colts have a first down. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. Off of play action. Lock. But escapes the sack. Oh, he's going to let this go for the end zone. And intercepted. Maybe the turning point they need. Picked by Ronnie Harrison. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. They begin with a run by Fournette. And an alley to run. And he's able to get this across the 10 before being taken down. The Jags picking up the first down there, a gain of 12. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I can just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there, I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 30. A Jacksonville first down on a pickup of 17. And on this challenge, the refs have to take a peek and see whether or not the receiver was able to dot the eye with both feet. While making sure that he possesses the football all the way through the catch. To back good plays have them on the move on first down. Let's go, D. It's gonna be a long day. Here's Foles. And he will be hit from behind and run over. Wow. It was Justin Houston, the native of Statesboro, Georgia, with a sack. And plays like that really hurt play calling. They had a really nice gain on the previous play, but gave about half the yardage back on the sack. Excellent pressure up front. Nowhere to go with the football. Down he goes. After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. A pass there complete to Westbrook, and he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. 15 yards there on the play as they try to chip away at this 15-point deficit. The Jaguars on third down. Not so hot. Two for nine to this point. This is third and four. Foles. He's got the hook up to Lee. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. Third down turns to first with that five-yard pickup. And that's understanding where the markers are because it's not just running to them. Because on the catch, you can actually be pushed back before the first down. It's getting past it and allowing that opportunity to drift back towards the first down line and still having picked it up. Really well run. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. 
All right, that one fell incomplete there, but the best quarterbacks, they'll miss on 40% of their throws somewhere in that neighborhood, similar to a great hitter in baseball who's going to fail seven out of 10 times and still have a great year. In this case, you want perfection, but way better that it hits the ground instead of going to an opposite color jersey. To throw once more on second and 10. Foles, and this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. One of the selling points at the end route is it gives the quarterback a really nice sight line to his receiver and almost on a direct shot, able to throw the ball into the middle of the field and have a great chance of success as they did on that play. The Jaguars on third down. They're hitting at just 30%, three for 10. Here it's third and two. He'll drop to throw. This one complete to the tight end, O'Shaughnessy. And he will have the first down as he gets this to the 47. It'll be a pickup of four, good enough to earn him yet another first down. First down, the 47 yard line. Foles going to come up now, first and 10. And he's five for six now, throwing the ball on this drive. They'll drop to throw. His throw incomplete. D.D. Westbrook, his intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Second and 10. He's got his tight end, O'Shaughnessy. And he'll go down, shy of the 40 at the 41. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. This offense has converted two third downs on this drive already. This is third and four. And he's going to get this inside the 30. That would a pickup of 15 for Jacksonville. We'll definitely see some open running lanes, and he's taking advantage of it right now, but that shouldn't be a surprise. Defense has the lead. They're playing for the pass first. So a good run by Fournette. Now another first and 10. He can't hit. He's not going to get me. Now Foles. This will be caught inside the 10. And he'll head out of bounds inside the 10. Mark him down at the 9. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Out of the gun, they run with blue. And they'll get this from the 8 to the 5. Pick up a 3. Every team we ever talk to that continues to run the ball in a game, even when they haven't had much success, all talks about attrition, don't they? If you keep running it, eventually good things are likely to happen. It's been a hard go in this game today, hasn't it? Yeah, this defense, they met pretty much every challenge in front of them this afternoon. They're still trying to run the ball, but they're not finding much space. Second down and goal. Foles. He hits blue. They'll get nothing out of that one, and it's going to lead to a third down. They tried to swing it out left into the flat, but the defense, they were very principled there. It felt very West Coast offense, didn't it? You know, you know their expression, right? On a West Coast offense, when they throw the ball, it's either going to be a touchdown or a check down, meaning they like to press it downfield. If they don't have it, swing it out, which is exactly what we saw there. But how about the great pursuit and tackle? And he's going to go down. Sacked right around the 17. Marcus Hunt. Able to get him down for a loss of 11. And it brings up fourth down. All right, partner, count with me. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. Look, he had all day to throw the football and never got rid of it and allowed for the sack. That's not on the offensive line. And Lambeau will put this one through. And they're hanging around here as the lead's down to 12. That drive just seemed to go for an eternity. I could kind of hear our sponsors saying, hey, we need to get our product pushed here. But then it ends in a field goal. Yeah, how about that? Not enough time for product placement, but plenty of time to get three points out of the deal. <laughs> I know that the guys on defense, though, they wanted to get those products out there. They wanted to stop that drive, just were unable to do so.
Now after the made field goal, back out Lambeau to kick this one off. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. Luck and the Colts come up now first and 10 at their own 26. Now a fake on the give here as they try the run pass option. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. It'll be a loss of a yard, and it'll be second and 11. They threw the screen to the perimeter, but to no benefit at all. Tackled behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of yardage. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Luck now to throw. This goes to Mack on the check down. It's a four-yard pickup, and that'll lead here to a third down. The Colts on third down. They've been very good, five for seven thus far. This is third and eight from the gun. Here's Locke, and that is incomplete. They went with the dive look that time on defense, just flooded the field with defensive backs, blanketed everyone, took away all the passing angles, thus the incompletion. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he'll punt it away for the second time. This will be fielded at the 17 and able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. A big kick there. We'll call it 56 yards on the punt. And the Jaguars go on offense first down and 10. Start the drive over the middle, and it's incomplete. Trying to get it there to D.D. Westbrook, and it's second down. He shook his head right when he released that throw. He knew it was going to be a little off target. Yeah, the excitement got him on that one. Wasn't able to control the fact the receiver was open, and it would have been an easy throw. So after the incompletion, second and 10 from the 22. He'll look to throw. He's going to go deep for Conley. And that's caught inside the 35. And all the way down to the 29. It's a big play for the Jaguars. 49 yards. So now then, the big play has them all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. He'll look to throw. He'll find O'Shaughnessy open left side. And he will get this into the end zone for a Jaguar touchdown. James O'Shaughnessy, 29 yards, as his guys are back within a single score. So they get the score still down. The bottom line is they kept themselves in the game. They did keep hope alive, Brandon. That's exactly what they did. Now they've got to deliver and finish things off. Point after by Lambeau, up and good. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. And Lambeau now, after the touchdown, he'll kick this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. 
And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Go, go. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. They're holding on right now to that slim advantage in a one-score game. And you hear a lot about two-minute offense and four-minute offense. Obviously, the four-minute offense applies here. How do they run that effectively? Yeah, really what the four-minute offense is is you're just trying to grind the clock. So you want consistent gains, steady gains. Doesn't have to be big plays, but it has to be plays that gets first downs and keeps the ball away from your opponent. But certainly throwing the ball is in the mix here. It certainly is. Just make sure that you're careful with it. And again, get those first downs, keep possession of the football. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. That would have been a great catch, but it was real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he had been able to haul that one in. The Colts on third down. They've had good success, five for eight to this point. This will be third and six. Love. And the Jags get to him as down he goes. Miles Jack with a sack. Well, the beauty of screen passes is they take a little time to develop and they can often hit big, but sometimes they take too long to develop and sometimes you get sacked. Yeah, what's perfectly called for a defense to attack a screen? Typically a blitz. And even though people think that the screen operates against the blitz, if you have the blitz called and you still cover the screen, now that allows your blitzers to get there. Taken from just outside the 30. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And now out come the Jags. And things are starting to move in the right direction. They get the touchdown last drive, then their defense gets them the football back. Yeah, now they have a chance to get the lead if they can put something together here. And I'm eager to see how they decide to do it. Do they want to be methodical, or do they want to take the big strike and go after it right now? They'll try and start this drive in the air. The throw taken in by Cole. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. A gain of 32 that time. That could very well be a defining play in this game. A touchdown, that gives them the lead, and they took a major step towards getting there with that big play right there. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 at the 25-yard line. Completes it to Lee. 11 yards there for Jacksonville and a first down as well. And they'll try to squeeze in one more play here before the two-minute warning. Fournette running out of the gun. And he has met at the line of scrimmage and he goes down right there. No gain on the play as we have reached the two-minute warning. to the 10 yard line. Give him five on the carry there and it'll set up a third down. And there's a run to be happy with. Good solid yardage. He'll take that anytime you hand the ball to a back. They'll get to the line here, but remember it's also third down. He's back to throw. Got his man, it's caught. Touchdown, Jaguars. D.D. Westbrook there to make the grab. And the Jaguars have taken the lead. Wow. I know it's a never-say-never never situation, but to me, that looks like that's the one that's going to finish them off. The score that puts them in front here late, but now you got to rally your kick team, don't you, and say the last thing we need is a big return. And what happens is guys get overeager, get out of their lane because they're so excited they want to make the last tackle. You mess up, could come back at you a long way. Here we go now as we get set for a big two-point conversion. Foles will look to throw. 
Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. I think we can figure out why they went for two there, right? Up one. You want to make it a field goal difference, if at all possible. They didn't get it. Now they've got to play some defense down the stretch. Yeah, not much margin for error now for your D. They just have to get it into range. And Lambeau now, after the touchdown, he'll kick this one away. This is taken at the three. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Andrew Luck in the offense, down by one. Less than 90 seconds to go. And they need about 35 yards to get in range for a winner as they come up on first down. Luck now to throw. That's complete to Hines out of the backfield. And yeah, they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Good yardage there for the Colts. 18 and a first down. Well, that's a good first step, but several steps still to go. They still have time for the possible game-winning field goal. Time for them to be quick and hurry at the same time. Counting down toward a minute to go in this football game. Back to throw. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, and as it turned out, couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It's way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. So second down, still 10 yards to go. Ball on the 43. Now left. And that is incomplete. A lot of four down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. Third and long coming up defensively. You pressure the quarterback or drape all over the passing lane? Yes. That's exactly what you do. It's both because they're not mutually exclusive. They may have been at one time in football, but not anymore. You want to have that pressure. And if you have a big-time pass rusher, send him after the quarterback and then make sure you blanket the field. And he gets it to Funches complete. They call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. Partner, they're clearly saving those timeouts, but they still have to work with some urgency to put themselves in the right position. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Now it's Locke. And that'll be incomplete. So much of this game is about leverage. We always talk about low man wins in the trenches. Plus well, like that at just about every position. And sometimes if you lose that leverage and you're losing the battle, just jump up at the line of scrimmage and try and bat the ball away. And that's exactly what happened there. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Back to throw. Taken in by the tight end, Doyle. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. He has been terrific today, hasn't he? Yeah, absolutely. Run flawless two-minute drill right here. This has been quarterbacking 101 with a flourish. Now the Colts will use their third and final timeout as he'll stop it with 11 seconds remaining in the ball game. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. The Jaguars going to go ahead and use their first timeout 
That'll leave him with two remaining. We'll be back after this. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. This to almost certainly win the football game. And this one is right through. And it's celebration time on that sideline as they have taken the lead in the final seconds. And I don't know what more you can say about Adam Vinatieri in that career. Maybe the best to ever do this. Let's be honest. Does anything phase him? Snow, playoff games, Super Bowls. Just watching this made me nervous, but he never broke a sweat. Kick this one away, and off it goes. This will be fielded at the eight. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. Look at the clock. Everyone knows the situation. Probably time here for one final play. And we know what that play is going to be. It's got to be some sort of Hail Mary throwing it towards the end zone and hoping someone can catch it or catch it off of a tip. Think back to 2015. Didn't we see Green Bay pull that off twice in the season? Once in the regular season, once in the playoffs. So stranger things have happened. It'd be interesting to see what the defensive strategy is about who they put on the field to try and knock that ball away. Meanwhile, they take a shot to start the drive, but this is going to wind up incomplete. Well, going into the final play of this game, they knew that they needed some type of a miracle there at the very end, but they couldn't get it done. However, we were treated to really a spectacular affair. Even though they didn't finish it off, you're exactly right. They took us down to the last play. We're still, you're wondering, could it happen? Possibly, even though we both knew it was a long shot. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. With that, we say cheerio from London.